Welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and we're just going to jump right into this video. This video is going to be on survival and bushcraft kit items on a budget. Had a lot of questions and comments recently about gear recommendations, and budget seems to be a factor. So I'm going to take you back in time. I'm going to show you the items that I first started out with nearly two decades ago. Why? I recommend those items, methodology behind apportioning funds for those items in a given budget, and then what we're looking for in survival items. So let's go ahead and jump right into the kit. All right, so I've got two different piles of survival items here. What I like to call non-expendables for all my military people out there, and then what we like to call expendable items. Non-expendables are gonna be those items we invest more of our budget in to make those items last a little bit longer, get the best quality gear we can. It's gonna last us for a while. And then expendable items are those items that we can buy in bulk, relatively cheap. We're gonna use them one, two, maybe three times, and then eventually can these items and just replace them in our kit when we go to the field. When we talk about our survival kit, there's three characteristics I would recommend looking at. Affordability, obviously you gotta be cost effective. Multifunctional, in that some of these items can supplement for other priorities of survival like fire, water, food, and shelter. And then we gotta look at durability. These items have to last. Even the expendable items need to last a time or two or three in a survival situation if we're out there for an extended time in the field. But these items have to be durable and have to last. So these are the non-expendable items for our kit. These are the items that are gonna be the mainstay of our kit, the longest lasting, the crux of our kit, if you will. A lot of these items started out with and purchased at surplus shops, different stores, outdoor stores, camping stores, and just picked up when I first started about 20 years ago doing this. And they've been through civilian training, military training, out to the field, and all across the world. So I know they work, which is why I recommend them to you. All right, let's take a look at the non-expendable items in our kit, the mainstay of our kit. It's always gonna be there. First item, survival knife, more companion HD, the one I've been using for years now. Scandy grind, about a four inches or so of cutting surface. We've got a Rubberized handle, good for grip, especially with poor dexterity if it's cold out. File down the spine, give us a 90 degree edge so we can use it with our ferro rod to start fires. And this is even 100% carbon steel. We can take a rock, a piece of shirt or a hard rock and strike sparks off the back of our knife blade into charred material to start fire. And then even with the sheath itself, wrapped 550 cord around the sheath with ranger bands, making it its own mini survival kit with cordage and a cutting device and then a supplementary or improvised fire starter with the 100 percent carbon steel 20 bucks right here for our kit affordable durable long lasting this thing's been around the world next ferro rod six inch by half inch thousands and thousands of fires this thing is about eight bucks had it for years and there's still a lot of material on here for fire lighting next flashlight flashlight like this one black diamond this was 20 bucks, I think it goes for about 30 bucks now. But with this light, we have a red lens. And then with that red lens, we obviously have the white light, very bright. And then even the strobe function for signaling at nighttime. Next, just an old USGI spoon from a mess kit. This way we can eat in the field. However, the spoon can also open up can simply by holding it with our hand we can pry into the top of a can and then using a sawing motion with the tip of the spoon we can saw that can open and then access the food that's inside that next item is a compass now i recommend spending a little bit more money on the compass to get a good compass now do you need a compass that has a sighting mirror on it no do you need a compass that has a magnification lens no all you need a compass for is to get your bearing and shoot an azimuth so you can properly na land navigate and avoid getting lost in the woods however having a sighting mirror and then having a magnification lens on our compass along with scales to use for map reading gives us a multifunctional tool in that we have a signaling mirror now and then we have a way to use the sun's rays to start fire maybe with char cloth with this smaller magnification lens added pace beads and a whistle for another signal on here having a good compass like this around fifty dollars is going to last a long long time as part of the kit which is where i recommend it you cannot go wrong with a military canteen cup and canteen. Now this is a Nalgene canteen that I've had for a while and taken to training. You can get the OD Green version of a canteen for about three bucks at a surplus store, at least my local surplus store, and then a canteen cup 
for about seven bucks and you have four ten dollars a way to carry and transport water you can fill water up with your canteen and then purify it in your canteen cup but the canteen cup we can also use to make char cloth we can use it to cook our food once we get that can open with our military spoon put our food in here and cook it over a stove and that way we can have a meal and eat out of this. We can also collect debris, we can collect tinder in this or collect other materials that we're gonna use maybe for fishing line or for fishing traps. We can do a lot with the canteen cup. All right, so we have about $110 of our original budget already allocated to our items, 30 or so for knife and fire, 20 headlamp, 54 our compass, seven and then three making 10 for our canteen and canteen cup. And now for the final $40 so we can maintain our budget he is 20 for a grabber space blanket and then $20 for a poncho. Picked up this poncho at a surplus shop. Highly recommend that as a source for picking up a lot of survival gear. The reason we have two covering items here in the form of a poncho and a grabber space blanket, we can use one for the shelter while we use the other one for packing our gear away like in a ladder style pack frame using the poncho to pack up all our gear and then carry it out or we could switch and then we have the ability to use the grabber space blanket with our mylar inside as a signal putting three X's on the mylar side and hanging it up to alert rescuers that were in distress. But having two items like this gives us the ability to have shelter and then use the other covering item for whatever other purpose we need for survival. All right, so now let's talk about our expendable items. Remember, these are the items that we're gonna use one, two, maybe three times, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, and then eventually can these items and replace them. Because they're affordable, we can buy these in bulk and then just easily replace these items in our kit before we go to the field next time. And you'll notice how all of these cross over different survival priorities. We have things for shelter craft, but then we can also use them for signaling. We have cloths over here for gathering materials and even improvisation for medical aid. We have ways to construct and repair things in the form of tape, notebook and pens that we can use for note taking as well as land navigation. Some more fire things and then items for food gathering as well as a large tool that we can use for harvesting materials from the landscape. Over here we have drum liners, black, clear, and orange. They're 55 gallon drum liners. Orange means we can use this as a signal, like a flag, and wave it in the air to get attention of rescuers. We can use clear as a transpiration bag, a way to get more water. And then black we can use as a way to make shelter, fill this with debris, and becomes a browse bit that we can lay on in our survival shelter or we can use this as an improvised poncho or a way to gather material. So having different colors, very cheap and easy. Each one of these is about $1.25, so we get about $4 here in gear. Next we have duct tape. This is 45 yards of duct tape, $3. Pick this up at any hardware store or convenience store. We can use this for improvisation and creativity. All right, next we have right in the rain notebook. Highly recommend waterproof or water resistant notebooks especially being out in the field. But one thing we can do with this notebook is draw a solar compass or a Viking compass in the back page. In the event we lose our compass, we still have a way to land navigate. As long as the sun's out and you know how to use a solar compass, you're never without a land navigation device. All right, that next item, big one right here, the bow saw. This is great starter saw for individuals getting into bushcraft or survival. You can find this at any outdoor store, lawn and garden store, but this Runs about 10 bucks, 21 inch saw blade. We don't even need the frame. We can just buy the replacement saw, which is about $4, and then take that to the field with us. We can conceal that in our cache belt, and then when we need to, pull it out and from the materials from the landscape with our survival knife, process down and make a buck saw frame. But if you don't know how to do that, having a bow saw like this, very cheap and easy to have with us is great. Next we have cotton cloth. The Shemag is what I recommend. We can use it for a variety of purposes. Gathering materials like debris for a debris bed. We can use it to wrap around our heads when it's cold. We can use it for a medical aid device like an improvised tourniquet, similar to what we do with our military cravat. And then we can use it for collecting water like a sponge. But a Shemag, this one's 45 inches by 45 inches or so. Large piece of cloth that will last a lot longer 
but once we're done with it, we can dispose of this or turn it into char cloth and then just purchase a new one. This is about 10 to $12 right here. Now, a smaller version of that shemag is just a bandana. Put this in our back pocket, could be an everyday carry item, does everything that a shemag would do just on a smaller scale. This bandana is an extra large. I think it's 27 inches by 27 inches. And it's about two to $3 from a hobby store or craft store that you can pick up. Other items we can have for fire lighting, cotton balls and Vaseline and then a lighter. We can find these just about any convenience store or shopping location anywhere in those stores. Easy fire starter to get. It's always important to carry food into the wild and I know working on a budget, especially as a bachelor, having a food kit that gives a lot of calories and then protein and vitamins and fills you up. Ramen and tuna, the old prison meal. The tuna I think it was about $1.29 or so, and then the ramen was like 25 cents or something. So a very cheap and easy meal under $2, and it's about 500 calories right there with a lot of protein and carbohydrates to keep us fed when we're out training. So speaking of food, we can build a survival fishing slash hunting slash trapping kit with just items we can find. Go down to the coast, and there's probably fishing line along riverbanks or around ponds from people who have lost their line and cut it. You can collect that up and keep that. Picture hanging wire we can use for snare wire. Just wrap it up, put it in here. Wine corks, free. You can probably find these in the trash or bottle redemptions and pull these out and use them as bobbers. And then we can purchase fish hooks. We can also make primitive fish hooks like this bone with gutted 550 cord and then a wooden peg that we can use to affix the bone in place with gutted 550 cord and use it as a fish hook. It's just a primitive means of doing that. This is rather large, but it's a good example. Now, one other thing we can do at any surplus store, you can probably find just a folding stove like this. We can grab one of these so we can put our canteen cup on top of it and cook our meal either with fuel tablets that may come with the kit or with uh, just a small fire inside of the stove itself and then use the stove as a platform to cook on. Don't need it, but it's good to have. You can see we have a lot of items still in our expendables pile, items that we can buy in bulk and then use one or two or three times, get rid of those items and then replace them easily enough in our kit while still having a good chunk of our budget go to non-expendable items, items that are durable, affordable, multifunctional, and these items supplement those items with shelter craft, with fire, with signaling, crossing over different survival priorities. That is the whole point of building a survival kit. We want multifunctional items that are affordable and durable. Great kit right here, around $200 for people starting out in survival, starting out in bushcraft, vehicle go bags, just a kit to go out and practice skills with and then learn a lot of discipline with these items here. But I hope you guys like this video. Down and dirty today, just trying to get out here and get you some information, show you some things we used back in the day and how I've carried through in a survival kit, offer recommendations. But I hope you guys like this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I wanna thank you guys for everything you do for me, for the channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Mm -hmm.